man who knows about sustainable growth and success in business, it's DW Sports Director Scott Best. His down-to-earth nature, passion for exercise and hands-on approach has meant that he's not only seen triumph after triumph working with DW CEO Dave Whelan, but has also branched out in the boutique sector himself to launch Best Bootcamp. More recently, he's been paramount to the process of DW acquiring Fitness First, and in this new evolution, Scott's ability of establishing a sense of community through fitness makes it an acquisition supergroup that can do no wrong. Today, it's a pleasure to be here in Wigan, home of Wigan Athletic, to welcome Mr. Scott Best to the Escape Limits podcast. Thank you. Welcome, Scott. Now, I have to ask you this. I know you're from Liverpool, and I know you're a big Liverpool fan. Um, how do you deal with the fact that you guys own Wigan Athletics? My second club. <laughs> It's your second club. <laughs> Liverpool first, Wigan second. Yeah, it's my second club. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is that, I'm not a big, big sort of football person, so I'm, I'm not sure. But I know people who are sort of into football teams, they're kind of, you know... it's. Yeah. It, it, it was a bit difficult when they were in the Premier League, but now they're not. <laughs> oh, I can okay. watch them and hope they win every game. Okay. And when they were in the Premier League, it was the only game I wanted them to get beat was Liverpool. Right, But now okay. it's, it's good now. Okay, you have yeah. to be politically correct yes, on that Yes, correct, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so just tell us a little bit about your background. You know, where, where do you grow up? What were some of your early influences? How did you, you know, how did it all start for, for Scott? Yeah, okay. I, um, I start, obviously I'm from Liverpool, as you can tell. I grew up not far from Liverpool Stadium. Um, and basically I was in the contracting game. I was a contractor. Right. Um, and obviously I started there waiting to go to university. Six weeks, my dad wouldn't let me stay at home for the six weeks of the summer. Yeah. So he got me a job on oil refinery. Right. Um, and I started out there. Um, Anyway, I started, got the taste of earning money yeah. and obviously put university off for 12 months. I thought, I'll go next year, you know, this is too good to be true at the moment. So I um, started, started, stayed at work for an extra 12 months and then I, got, I broke my arm actually and I got a, uh, an opportunity to work in the office because I was in a cast and I, uh, I'd just come out of school where computers had just started, you know, obviously uh, gathering pace. Right. And um, obviously I, they, they put me in the office and I'd, over the time that I was there, I pretty much changed how they worked, operating systems, showed them easier systems, easier ways to work. So I got my break there, stayed in the office, and 12 years later, I was running the site, I was running the refinery. Oh, right. So uh, that's how I started out. And yeah. then at that time, obviously, my father-in-law, who's Dave Whelan, like you said, he'd started, he was buying workwear or eye visibility clothes. Right. And we did a lot on Stanlow. So I started pushing through Stanlow. Right. And then obviously when he sold JJB, Right. He asked me, obviously, to come and let's, you know, like do this together. Yeah. So I left where I worked, um, right. stand low if you like, and then I came to work for him. Right. Where, obviously, doing our own eye visibility range, Viswear, yeah. uh, which is still trading today. Really? Um, yeah. And then obviously, when 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 we bought the, the clubs back, if you like, Dave wants to push me into into running the health clubs. Right. Okay. So that's how my uh, my fitness journey begun. That's how it started. Yeah, so, yeah, what, yeah. so at school, were you were you an academic or? Oh no, definitely no. Not. No, no. I We're was just talking about your son's school. I was good no. at maths. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was good at maths. That was the only. That, it ended there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what, when when you were younger, then did you sort of have any? What, what, you know, leaving school, did you sort of have any idea about what you wanted to do, or was well, you like no, me? I where mean, you... you know, to this day, I, I, I still wish I'd have gone to university. Yeah. Um, as I say, you know, I got my results, got the results that I needed. Yeah. But as I say, in the six weeks, started, start, got the taste of earning money, if you like, and then just. Yeah. You know, thought I'll put it off a year, and you know, obviously that, that time never come. Right. Year after year, and I was just getting earning more and more money, and I thought I really need university. Yeah. But it is one of my regrets. I, w- yeah. I wish I had gone. Yeah. Yeah. They say sort of like some people when they're, you know, when they're really young, they kind of see clearly what what their future wants to be. You know. Yeah. For yeah. myself, I left school and I. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. Where, what, yeah. what was your experience? Oh, I, I wanted to be a footballer. Obviously, oh, okay. I wanted to play for Liverpool Football Club. But uh, at the age of nine, I was run over, and I think pretty much ended my football opportunity or my career, if you like. Right. Um, so it was then it was just like really, you know, well, I would have been something along the lines of mathematical, maybe an accountant, I right. dare say that. Um, but that was, that was where I was heading, definitely, yeah. Right. yeah. Maths was my strong point, so, so it would right. have been something in, okay. the, uh, in the mathematical world. Yeah. So, so a bit of history on, 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 I guess, DW Fitness, you know, what... Bit of background, I guess, for people who don't know too much about the business. Yeah. So, how, 
you know, how did, how did they start? Okay. Uh, what was the early yeah, days of J- them? JJB gyms, obviously, health clubs when Dave had the retail stores. Right. 1998, first one in Warrington. He started, obviously, then, you know, opening health clubs, health, uh, gyms. Yeah. Um, and then in 2009, Dave had been out since 2007, sold all his shares. Right. We had the opportunity to buy the health club side back. Right. And at the time, we only wanted to buy the health clubs, as you know, we've got health clubs and retail stores above. Right. Um, we would have liked to have only bought the health clubs, but with obviously with, with, with the leases that the health clubs were attached to the retail stores, we just couldn't break them up. Right. And the demise of JJB, unfortunately, just didn't give us enough time to reach out to landlords. So we ended up doing a deal to buy the 53 health clubs. Right. And with that, we took 51 retail stores too. Right. Um, and in the early years, obviously, you know, like we, 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 the main priority was always the health clubs. But as time's gone by, obviously now we've started, you know, retail's getting better. We've obviously changed change the formulas that we had but maybe right. a bit um bit bit unfair yeah and we've got that right now and then obviously we've we, we, we've decided you know driving the business driving both sides and now bringing the two of them together more and more closer now you know right so so just on that story so so they originally then with um what, what was the what was the jjb story I, uh, I mean dave built 450 retail stores right okay. at the time you know was the biggest Sports retailer in the, in, in, the, in the country, right? Um, and as I say, I think I think I mean I, I don't know I'm not too sure actually why he opened the first club, but he just thought you know health clubs were obviously going to be the next move. Okay. You know, obviously built them on the on the back of the JJB brand. Right. Um, and they were called JJB. JJB gyms. Yeah, gyms, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Or JJB health clubs. Oh, you know? Right. Um, yeah, and, and so basically started that. Okay. Obviously, then realised that you know he, he was onto something here. He opened in the first ten clubs. I would say seven, eight of them were really successful. Right. Um, so obviously then he started rolling out. And between 2003, 2007, if you like before, obviously, uh, you know, they had like a real big expansion plan. They got to 53 health clubs. Right, OK. Um, and yeah, so, so, and that was the lucrative part of, of JJB really at the time. The gyms were very, very lucrative, making, making good money. Right. Um, and that was obviously always, the, always, always the, the part of it, if you like, that he would have liked back. OK. So he bought the health clubs back. We were working together in, in, in work where, yeah. and then obviously he asked me to uh, to head up the health clubs. And with the and, and when they um, and and when when the sort of business sold then, so he the, so he in, in some of the locations I believe the clubs were on the top and yeah, the yeah. retail was on. Yeah, so, I mean, so did another company own the retail? At, no, uh, no, oh, it was all bit, and that was really the problem. Really, I mean, you know, in hindsight, would we have took the le- retail stores? No, you know, but. Um, because we couldn't, because we couldn't split the units really. The 53 yeah. health clubs, you know, there was two stores, two health clubs that didn't have stores: right. Trafford and Middlesbrough. We had to take it as a solid unit because yeah. basically you've got an escalator in our reception, basically that takes you up to the first floor where the retail store is. Right. So, um, so the health clubs are usually on the ground floor. We've got a few oh, okay. that, that's mixed, but um, usually on the ground floor because the swimming pool, swimming yeah, pool, right. pool will be uh, will be sunk in the ground, um, and then retail stores on first floor. Right. Okay. And, and when, when, when did the name change then from JJB to...? Uh, right away, because JJB right. was still trading. Right, okay. So JJB was trading still. Um, yeah. And they, I think they, you know, it was 2011, maybe, yeah. when, when unfortunately went into administration. Right. Um, so 2000, we had two years of obviously JJB running alongside us. Yeah. But, um, but as I say, we, our main priority was the health clubs. Yeah, and then yeah. we built it to uh, 71. We right. then um, bought seven old LA fitness clubs off Pure Gym after the acquisition of right. LA Fitness Club uh, LA Fitness by Pure Gym bought the seven sites there and we were up to 78 right and then obviously uh, you know I'd say a year had passed two years had passed when we started looking at um, at fitness first yeah. and, and do, you, do you think at the time obviously that I guess coming out with the model where you had sort of retail and fitness together you know it kind of made I, I guess as an outside it made sense because you've got people buying clothes and working out and it all fits together was that do you think that was sort of part of the success of that early business model uh, yeah or? i mean you know we're on some great retail parks like right. some real top retail parks for football reasons and you know i mean obviously it's a club it's it's a, it's we, we're really strong in that you know obviously we have high football yeah. through being on great retail parks um you know and, and as i say we've got like some great retail stores we've got some great health clubs you know and yeah. realistically you know that to have, to have both is tough yeah. But um, but absolutely in the early days, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, and that, that's because, as I say, we're on some great retail parks. Right. And how? What members. percentage now? Day, now are the are the are the clubs got a, a retail element, or are they just totally separate? Now? Yeah, we've got fifty-five 
uh, like joint sites that I've got a retail store right. and a um, and a leisure and, and, and re- retail store and leisure club. Yeah, yeah. I've 55 stores and I've 123 clubs. Right. So that just gives you a mix. I mean, there's not that many. We've also got lots of standalone retail stores too. Right. Because we've built retail up over the years. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and in fairness, I mean, we, you know, in the early days, we, we probably didn't merge the two of them together as. as Best we could, yeah. and in, at some stage through the journey, we've we've even like you know like tried to pull them apart. Maybe right. if we were to, you know, through acquisition or through maybe selling off, you know, we may may have done one or the other. Right. Um, but you know, like absolutely now we're just we're so we're so intertwined. We've brought a new chief exec in, who's right. obviously who's like you now merging the two businesses together. Right. Um, you know, obviously got a marketing department now that works across the two yeah. um, as opposed to having two silos now we are totally 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 merged together yeah right. it's coming it's really coming it's together working, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so with in, just to touch on retail a minute you know again i'm not from that world but you read in the newspapers how difficult it is in that world now you know competing with the online the likes of amazon so, yeah, you know, yeah yeah is, do you think that the way that you know you've, you've got a unique model that allows you guys to sort of stand out from what you know, yeah. the others are having to deal yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would say that um, we've probably been slow to come, to go online, if you like, e-commerce, right. but I believe now we've got that model right. Yeah. Um, it's about now, obviously, the CRM journey. Obviously, you know, you, you cust- one customer of you talking to, to, to obviously, to, to leisure, com- to leisure uh, members. Yeah. Um, getting them more and more involved in, in, obviously, purchasing all their sportswear in retail stores. Yeah. So, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, now, now we're really, really starting to leverage that. Yeah. It's starting to come together, yeah. And is the brand, in terms of you know your branding and marketing, are you are you sort of bringing, uh, picking on what you said a moment ago, are you sort of bringing that customer so that you know they're they're buying into the DW brand and you've got these different components to it now? Yeah, is that yeah, part of the yeah, absolutely, yeah. Right. I mean, we never had any presence in London. Obviously, right. the Fitness First acquisition gave us that. Yeah. Um, and, and now, now really, like obviously trying to improve the CRM. Yeah. We, we, we'll start really leveraging, obviously, you know, like that Fitness First brand. If you like, we've we've started joining the two brands. We're now DW Fitness First. Yeah. Um, you know, start to bringing that together, but you know, still outside L clubs. If you like, you'll either read, you'll either see Fitness First or you'll see DW Sports. Yeah. But from a retail point of view, we're aiming to really like scoop all that up. Obviously, now starting to um, reach out more to Fitness First members. Obviously, about spending, you know, yeah. to, uh, online if you like e-commerce definitely because we haven't got retail stores in London. So that mainly right. their their purchases will be through the e-commerce platform. Right. So so prior to the, uh, uh, you know, let's talk about fitness first for a moment. So I guess going back, you know, when we started our company twenty years ago, you know, I, I actually went down to to their offices in um, in, uh, in, in it is in Bournemouth actually. I went yeah, down yeah, there yeah, and yeah. I trying to sell equipment to, 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 to the guys there and. Uh, so you know they started very small, expanded. I think they got you know 170 clubs or something like that. Um, so they were huge. You know they were, I yeah, guess, yeah. probably like you guys are now. You know one of the biggest in the UK. What, what do you think kind of happened there? You know what from, yeah, from them mean, sort of going from a national chain to a London chain and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you know I think you know it's not uncommon to know that obviously they overexpanded. I mean obviously right. you know and then at some stage had to consolidate. Obviously. Um, and through the CVA process, lost a lot of the loss-making stores, right. um, and really then concentrated on, on central London, if you like, or certainly around the London area. Kept real winners outside, um, but obviously realised that you know inevitably the, the the core of that business was based inside the M25. Right. Um, so really concentrated on that really, and I mean Fitness First have done a super job in the last five years. Yeah. I mean one of the things you know that was a real um, a real winner for us buying that brand was. How much investment they'd had in the in the portfolio? Yeah. It was really, really well invested. Clubs looked fantastic. Um, you know, everything they'd done was was, was spot on. Really, they'd done a great job. So you got because I, I and again, you know, in the early days, you guys were sort of almost like competing against each each other. What what, what do you think? Sort of DW managed to sort of wipe them out as, as a competitor in the uh, north. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, it's funny because obviously um, now with the new management team <laughs> and we talk about this. Um, I would definitely say that DW Sports Clubs, when they came to town, you know, like were real, like real winners, you know. And right. they built David, obviously, you know, done a super job in building and building them really well. Um, they were built to last, you know, right. like obviously um, high spec, really, really big quality. Um, and then obviously, you know, Fitness First, as, as you know, they've been there maybe a long time before. There was also like the rise of the budget gyms, so they, they were competing against. If they never had swimming pools, it was harder to differentiate themselves. 
TW Sports had, all had swimming pools. Right. Um, so it was harder to differentiate themselves. And I just think, as I say, oh, as time went by, it was just obviously it was the right thing to do. Right. So obviously we've retained the best of the management team. Obviously, whether that be from Scotland, Wales, you know, yeah. um, Northern Ireland, you know, we, we Fitness First retained them guys, and obviously we've managed to keep hold of them, and now obviously really integrated them into DW Sports, which is now starting to really, uh, really work. Yeah. Yeah. And and in terms of I guess DW's expansion, like so you you'd always been strong in the north, but not in London, and. What, yeah. Why do you think that was difficult for your brand, or not your brand, all yours, but, but DW to, to, to sort of get into the London market? Well, I mean, you know, really get, finding sites in London is the challenge. Right. You know, right. certainly if you want something like 25,000 square feet, you try and find that in the centre of London nowadays, it's very, very hard. Right. They already had that presence. Right. Um, we didn't have any presence in London. We had the two clubs that we bought off LA Fitness. Yeah. Um, you know, and basically, it, it was realistically to have that London presence, yeah. so really to be able to market that we are a national team now. You know, a national, um, national, national company that can you know that can offer memberships from you know, pool up to um, up to Inverness. Yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, what you what also the other thing was, it was such a great blend because there was only one real like club that we had that was an issue, which was Pool, which right. was the home of Fitness First. We had obviously we had we had our club in Pool and they had a club in Pool, but apart from that, there was no other clubs that obviously were were, were anywhere near each other. Right. Okay. So it was a great fit for us. Yeah. Um, geographically, yeah. you know they, had, they even even their out of town clubs we we didn't have presence Brighton, Bath, you know Basingstoke. Yeah. So um, so it was a real good fit. Yeah. And it's you know as I say we're starting to see that now. Yeah. And what, what do you, so if you look at I guess internationally not just in the UK you, you're starting to see the sort of the, the people that play in the kind of middle market, you know, the, the, you've either got the, the high end um, or you've got the budget, which are very strong. And, and I, I guess, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I guess you, you know, Fitness First and, and DW would kind of been in that sort of middle area. Um, how come you guys are managing to continue to succeed and grow? Dis, you know, despite what's happening in all other markets, you know, there's, there's a complete separation, and there's no yeah. real mid market. Well, well, the, 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 evidently there is still a mid market. Right. I mean, we, you know, it's been consolidated right. uh, over the over the years with with obviously with Fitness First being bought by us, with LA Fitness being bought by Pure Gym, and becoming obviously you know like converted to budgets. Right. Um, and so obviously that market still remains, albeit it's not as big anymore. Right. Okay. So so and we've I just think we've obviously been you know obviously been good at what we've done. And we've just been able to maintain that, if you like. And right. Obviously, we've had a big, huge investment program in the last 12 months in bringing the clubs back to, to up to, to, to you know the glory days, if you like. Yeah. Um, and I think we've done a great job the last 12 months. You know, obviously, um, with, with with what we've learned from Fitness First, yeah. a lot of lot of Fitness First, good all the good stuff that they were doing. We've now started to integrate some of that back into fit, DW Sports. It's not all been one-way traffic. Yeah. We've we've obviously seen how good some of that stuff is. We've tried to start integrating it into DW Sports, and it's working. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the, it's not so much as if, like, you know, you, you've had a two-way direction which you can go, yeah. not, you know, budget or premium. That, that market still still exists, and yeah. why we've got, you know, so many thousand members. So, one of the big things, I guess, in 2016 was it when you you acquired Fitness First? Was that was that when that? Two, yeah, October 2016. 2016. Yeah. So, bringing two very different cultures together. Um, management styles you know what what were some of the challenges that you had to deal with sort of guiding that ship you know what, what would you say was your... can i say mr whelan <laughs> <laughs> um no it's i mean as i say we we probably went in looking at a lot more um of ideas that we would have you know if you like brought to fitness first right. but actually when we got there when we when we bought not only like a great infrastructure of health clubs also, the teams, the guys that we brought on board have been fantastic. Right. Um, so we've nurtured, or obviously, you know, we've started to integrate them teams in, into ours. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we've obviously brought a new management team in as well, from, obviously from LA Fitness, if you like. So we've got some of their senior management team. Right. And, and basically, having a bit of everything really has really worked. I'd like, obviously, best, you know, skill sets, you know, obviously best in class, obviously from different areas. So pulling all that together yeah. um, has, has really worked. You know, as I say, it's not we never went blase and went in and thought DW Sports the only way. You know, we know we know what we're doing. We went in, seen some of the great stuff they were doing, and if anything, we've probably integrated more of that stuff into DW Sports now right. than we have DW Sports ways into into Fitness First. So it's been a great mix. It's, yeah. it's been a great learning curve too. Yeah. So it's been a great opportunity to see, you know, like obviously what is 
you know, best in class. Um, and obviously just trying to, to bring that to life, if you like, in, 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 in clubs that we haven't had that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was it, when, like, going into it, did you, was it sort of, as, was it as straightforward as you thought, or was it, was it, was it quite difficult to, I, I guess, you know, sort of merge two companies yeah, together? Yeah, I mean, we probably went in at the early days thinking that I would have two brands. One would be inside the M25, would be Fitness First. Right. And then, you know, obviously we'd change all the ones outside the M25 to DW Sports. Um, but as you see, when you start understanding, and I'm from the north, so I didn't really understand the, the, the uh, you know, the, the London area, if you like. <laughs> um, when you start seeing, like, obviously the commuter belts, towns, you know, like, obviously, we've just recently changed the Waldorf to a Fitness First, which right. was a DW Sports. Um, you know, when you start understanding, if you like, how people travel, certainly, yeah. um, we've we realised it's not a priority. Right. So we've then concentrated on, on the dual, the dual branding, if you like. Obviously, we, you know, we've um, started putting the, putting the branding out there. Yeah. Um, I say we've now, you know, sponsored Sky Sports Mix. Right. Um, on Sky, we've got a huge presence on Sky Sports, which is really working for us. Um, and so some of the stuff we've done in the last 12 months has been really good, yeah. yeah. We're starting to now get the benefit from it. Right. And is that brand, that fitness first brand then, is, as you said, is that staying? That's, 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 yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, as I say, like I touched on earlier, the, infra- the, the infrastructure or the, um, the investments, if you like, that they've made in, in the London area, yeah. it's, it's second to none, to be honest. Yeah. So uh, absolutely, we'll keep it, yeah. Yeah. And when, when you mentioned the differences, I, I, I was in one of the clubs, I think it was Baker Street, and they were chatting to one of the guys there and he sort of mentioned that you know if unless it's across the street it's it's kind of too far you know what tell, tell us about that you know in terms of the distance that people are prepared to travel in that sort of central area well one of the one of the things i learned from buying Waldorf was um we lost something like 18 percent of the members in the first month of, right. of opening as a standalone club right. because they basically they were part of the la fitness group they you know used other clubs in the london area um, so we lost this huge percentage and we thought, shit, you know, what have we done here? Uh, if I can swear. Yes, um, and so basically, um, when we realised that, we, I realised then the power of having multi-club in London. So right. I realised it wasn't as easy as just picking a site in London and they will come. You know, like people, they want flexibility. They may, may, may live in Queen's Park and work in the city, you know, right. like obviously and want to have that flexibility to use both clubs. So, so it, it was something that I learned very, very quickly. And then... It, if you like, through not being able to acquire LA Fitness and then picking up these, these clubs, if you like, later on, we, we, we learnt a lot. And as I say, it's, it's the, the multi-use, and it was a, a real big selling point, the multi-use of, of the Fitness First locations is absolutely key in London. It's, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very hard to, to have a standalone club in London. Right. Yeah. How, how far do, is, do people tend to travel then? Is it, is it literally, literally, you know, if you're, I mean, if you're across we, we, two we talk streets. about it, they won't cross the street, really? like you said, yeah. Well, certainly if they come out of a tube station to turn on left, they won't go right to a health club. Yeah. So, um, look, I'm not from down there, so maybe someone could correct me, but that's, that's certainly how, you know, how it's, it's, it's viewed or it's discussed, yeah. you know. And I guess um, in, outside of London then, you know, people are travelling quite... A yeah, distance in yeah, terms of yeah, miles yeah, to, yeah. to get around. Yeah, and then you see also like the commuter towns. I mean, you know, Brighton for us, for example. Right. You know, how many people go from Brighton? How many of our members, Brighton members, use clubs inside the city of London? It's unbelievable. Really. So it's just like obviously, you know, that cluster of clubs that they can use, that they can really, um, you know, leverage. Yeah. Is, is a real winner for us. Yeah. Right. So un- understanding the sort of movement and commuting patterns of your members and yes, absolutely. As, as yeah, opposed yeah, to just yeah. Ge- geography. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of areas that we're not in. Yeah. But obviously, you know, like that we need, you know, we really want to try and try and you know, invest in London, open new clubs in London. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, some of those areas that we're not in, we we, we aim to try, you know, try and find the right sites there yeah. that can obviously add to the portfolio. Yeah. So when all this was going on, around about the same time, you also decided to get involved in the, in the boutique market. Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, what were you thinking? You, you had well, some my, time? My first, <laughs> my first idea of boutique was uh, 2013. Right. I'd been to America like we all have and seen the rise of Soul Cycle. Yeah. So I tried to start, obviously, a concept, if you like, inside our clubs. Right. But obviously getting a member who has always had it for free to then start trying to pay, albeit was only, the extra money was only going to the instructor. Right. Um, it just, the model didn't work. So right. I always, with us not being in London at the time, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, to, you know, have a go and just obviously see if, when, when, the, when the time was right. So I left it for a few years and, yeah. um, and then obviously I seen Barry's came to London. Right. As you know, cycle opened. Um, and then obviously, as I say, then I felt the time was right. 
and in May 16, I opened Best Boot Camp in Shannon Cross, which right. was an old fitness first. Ironically. Yeah, it used to be a. So, so that was beat first, which yes. wasn't successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what made? Why did you think you could? Well, I think I think because because <laughs> fitness first was so strong in that area. Right. I don't think they really, you know. They could have managed without Charing Cross. You had the Strand, right. Covent Garden. So it was like very, very, you know, close to other clubs, if you like. Right. It was a very, very weak, um, you know, during the week. It was right. a very, very um, during the week club, yeah. weekend, no trade type thing. So um, so they made that decision to come out there. Yeah. And as I say, I took the opportunity. Do you think they were a little bit, because they were quite, I think they were probably one of the, one of the first, maybe not exactly the first, but they were quite early on in doing a boutique. You know, do you, do you think they were sort of, a little bit too ahead of the curve? Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, that's obviously still the aim. You know, like trying to put booty type um, classes, if you like, or facilities inside the clubs. Yeah. I think they did that. I think it, obviously, it still works now in four or five locations that we've got it. Yeah. Um, we're still putting it in, in some more clubs now. So, um, absolutely, it worked, yeah. Yeah. You know, just, as you said, yeah, maybe it was ahead of its time. Yeah. Or maybe, as I say, they, you know, they didn't see it through long enough. Right. They, they, you know, it's, it's not something you'd open your doors to and people come into. No. It's, 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 it's a slow burner, you know. You right. need, obviously, brand recognition. You need understanding of what, what the brand is, what it does, what, you know, what the workout is. Yeah. And only over time, obviously, bringing people through your doors. Do you, do you get that? So right. maybe, maybe, maybe they, uh, on that one, they pulled it too early. But as yeah. I say, Beat's very successful in other clubs that we've got it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and with the boot camp, you just opened another one as well in um, Kensington. South Kensington, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how, how's, how's that going? Yeah, good, good. Yeah. We had um, some problems early on with noise like like everywhere in london does but i'm, I'm over them now yeah. so the boot camp which we've done right from the start i've got a boot camp and a spin studio okay um the boot camp got off to a great start whereas obviously we the the because of the noise we had to do some work inside the spin studio and that took a month or two extra yeah. but it's starting to get there now I mean, obviously yeah. if they're not busy in january they're never going to be busy no so um and just tell us a bit about the product then what's the what's the concept um, in, in terms, you know, what's, what's the philosophy around the, the best boot camp then? Okay, so it's a boot camp, it's a 50 minute workout. Right. Obviously, you know, f- following obviously like a boot, a boot camp style, yeah. treadmills, um, obviously floor boxes, um, dumbbells, kettlebells. Um, so it's an all over body workout using both the treadmills and using obviously floor exercises. Right. Um, and then obviously the, the, the studio, the spin studio is best cycle, is yeah. obviously, um, you know, obviously to the beat, obviously the um, rhythm ride. Yeah. Um, 45 minute class using using obviously a full body workout right um, and yeah yeah good and you kind of combine I, I did one when it first opened you, you kind of combining you've got kettlebells and so it's not it, it's quite a the, the functional part is quite mixed as opposed to some of the other yeah, concepts yeah, is it? yeah yeah absolutely yeah I mean it's obviously it's based on, on on a 50 minute workout between obviously running and obviously I'm, I'm working on the floor yeah. um, and it's 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 that it's a strict concept as opposed to like obviously where we've just opened a new studio in Leeds you know yeah. like obviously which is like a, a real um, like a booty concept inside our Leeds club right and that's obviously like a, a mix of of all all over body workouts right. full boot camp style class a real boot camp style class ropes old salt bikes rock bikes and that's obviously uh, so it's just it's a different concept different space right. as I say we're trying to we're all <laughs> trying to find a winning concept right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's obviously uh, what that is too. But so, we're really, we're really confident with this one. So, with you, you mentioned about, you know, like, I guess the traditional clubs where you had, you know, your Group X room, and that kind of thing happened for free, and and it's obviously working. You know, it's definitely working in London. How, how do you think that will translate outside of London? You know, are people going to be happy to pay ten to fifteen pound a session for something that they're getting free? You know, you've got great clubs. Um, what? How, how do you think it will work? Outside? And that's the challenge. Right. You know, I mean, obviously, while we. I think it's you know obviously the affluency of London yeah. commuters, if you like, um, you know, can afford the boutique market. How well that transfers outside of London is still a challenge. Right. You know, certainly, um, I've just recently come back from New York, and everything right. there is thirty-four dollars minimum. You know, thirty-four. Right. Thirty-four. Yeah. <laughs> and by the time you've bought straps and gloves and water and everything else, yeah, you know, you're over forty dollars, and that that is a real, real tough ask. Right. But obviously the American market's a lot more developed in boutique. Right. I think you know obviously American uh, people you know certainly spend a lot more on themselves. Right. Um, and just as I say, as gradually no doubt as the brands grow in London, you obviously see it'll get bigger and bigger. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you think it's something that will eventually? Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, 
obviously there's there's others try you know obviously now trial and outside of London. Yeah. Um, you know obviously certainly where, where capex is a big issue. I.e. You know, I couldn't do like by 22 treadmills, for example, you know, in a place that you're going to then charge £10, you know. No. You've got to obviously get the model right. Obviously, um, CapEx is a big part of it. Yeah. Rent rates, obviously, which are a lot better outside of London. Yeah. <laughs> so that's on your side. Um, you know, as I say, just, just getting the model right, really. Yeah. And as I say, if, if, if the London ones are successful and we can take it out, if we can add them to our clubs and give our members, which is the, which is the main aim, really, we're just obviously, you know, understanding it so we can hopefully give it to our members as an add-on to the membership, um, that, 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 that was something that we'll look at over the next couple of years. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk in the industry about boutique and how it's going to be the next, you know, club, traditional health clubs will be going away. You, you, you know, you guys are obviously very invested in the traditional health club and you yourself, I know, travel around and are very in touch with what's going on in the market. How would you describe what's happening on the boutique and do you think where it is at the moment is sort of likely to evolve into something that that makes more business sense or do you think that you know there will also there'll be the traditional clubs and then there'll be boutique clubs yeah um i think there's a few operators in london who who are doing really well out of it right you know i think i don't think everyone is right i think obviously like all industries or all sectors you know you'll start seeing consolidation over the next few years um survival of the fittest like i said earlier you know obviously um but i think you'll, you'll get some of the so, I don't think there'll be as many players. And right. then it's realistically the influence of if some of the American brands, some of the big American brands come to the UK, you know, obviously what, what effect that will have on, on others, if you like. Yeah. So I definitely think you'll see some consolidation, but I also see, think you'll see a lot of growth through it over the next few years, yeah. 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 And how long that lasts, I'm not too sure. No. But, but as I say, you know, I mean, I've been looking at in, in America for the last six, seven, eight years, and it's only got bigger and bigger and bigger over there, so... Yeah. You imagine, or you can you can see it if you like, may get bigger and bigger here, and that's how we adapt. It's how we, you know, we can take some of that learning if you like, and and, and put it into our clubs. Yeah. You know, we can offer them same facilities as part of your membership. That will always be the aim. That will right. always be the priority. So, um, and that's what we're, that's what we're thriving for. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I've seen certainly in in certain pockets in the US now, where you you have a a sort of fairly affordable membership, and then there'll be a a boutique within a club which will be you know if you unlimited classes and you'll go from say twenty dollars to forty nine dollars um, yeah. and you know looking at what you guys are doing with your sort of functional spaces you know do you think that's something that would you know yeah is something yeah you're i mean with, and with technology obviously you know we can when, when we can start differentiating a member if you like who's fully you know obviously fully paid to, to do boutique type classes in your clubs as you bring them in as you as you start yeah. Um, you know, the differentiating, knowing who's, who, if you like, who's, who's got a different membership or differentiating the memberships between the two, yeah. that, will be the, that will be the challenge. Because, I mean, obviously, we've had all these ideas over the years. It's nothing new, really. No. We've had all the ideas, but it's just really how you bring them into play, how you, you, know, how you, how you, put them, how you get them to work for you, really. Yeah. Um, but, but I say over time, we've got no plans for that now. But no. over time, you know, obviously, they, 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 they could be some of the things that we look at. Yeah. yeah. What would you say if you had to sort of boil down some of the, you know, the essence of what has made, you know, your group successful and continuing through, you know, you only got to look at what's happened over the last sort of probably five or six years, you know, very huge, huge amounts of change, you know, disruption, as I said, from retail, from boutiques, from low costs, you know, what, what would you sort of put down as some of the sort of things that really, you know, you look at as a, you know, heading up a, a business like this that, that kind of continues to keep you on the cutting edge, which other people have probably not been doing. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously innovation, you know, like right. obviously, and, and trying to find that next, um, you know, like obviously innovative idea, or obviously, you know, obviously with the, with the clubs, making sure that the clubs are kept up to, to, to the right standards, clean, yeah. tidy, um, well presented. The staff are obviously uh, are well, well presented and, and um, you know, obviously welcome you welcome yeah. you when you come into a club I mean obviously a lot of the, the feedback we get from pe- members who leave to go to the budget gyms and come back there's nobody there nobody to talk to no advice so obviously we, you know, we've made a big emphasis on that yeah. um, and obviously try to bring that back we've now started putting um, health and fitness managers on the floor so right. obviously so we've always got presence on the floor so you can always go and ask advice for yeah. um, and that's obviously something that we see was a missing part when everybody chased the, uh, the budget model, if you like, right, and that's uh, and that's something that we realised didn't work. Yeah. We tried to start bringing it back, and we have done. It's been started being successful, um, and, and as I, you know, I mean, as I say, we've had some some great months. 
yeah. in the past few months. So it's you know it's it, it's still out there. Yeah. As I say, we've invested a lot in the clubs in the last twelve months, um, and that's to, to really to, to bring them to put them ahead if you like. I would say that DW Sports through the ten, you know 2011 13 foot we were way ahead of our competitors in functional space. We were we were the yeah. first two, I would say. Um, you know, but obviously others others caught us up. Others got better at it, yeah. and then I say now our our, our our aim is really to to try and get get ahead again. As yeah. you know, the the uh, the spec, if you like, is always changing. Yeah, yeah. The industry is always changing. We've got to stay ahead of the times. Yeah. And as I say, when you've got an estate as big as ours, you can't you can't do everything in the first year or in the, you know in this year. So you've got to obviously plan it out. We're getting we're getting better at that. We're obviously starting to plan ahead. Um, you know, obviously through through now the. The, the, the power of our brand if you like to have them fitness first with us and um, we're getting bigger and we're getting better we're getting more powerful with, with obviously with, with buying power and obviously yeah. you know um, looking at ways of working together and bringing, bringing things that work from, from either brand yeah. and obviously you know adopting them into other brands so you know as I say yeah, that's, yeah. that's our aim in the next couple of years Yeah and does it do you think it gets because innovation I guess is, is easy for I guess for small companies and probably when you're smaller now you're so big you know what how do you sort of manage to get, I don't know, how many, how many employees have you got? You, you must have a lot. Well, over 3,000 now, yeah. Right. How, how do you kind of get all of those people behind, you know, when you have a new idea? It's like, you know, you've been out, you've seen this, bring it to the business. You know, how do, how do you kind of get that across, you know, thousands of, of people? Yeah, well, I would definitely say through the learning and development departments of Fitness First, right. something that I realise now we were, we were really missing in, in, in DW Sports. We've been able to now obviously start, you know, training the staff put more emphasis on training the staff so when we have new new initiatives new ways you know obviously really making sure we can get that down to, to that level if you like the, the, you know the, 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 the team on the floor if you like right. making sure that they're understanding why we're doing these things FGT obviously um, has been, been a fitness first initiative that we've introduced into DW Sports been really successful in the first few months yeah. um, so it's really through, I would definitely say through now training more and more training that we've been doing We've now started people. developing the people. Yeah, our people yeah. development in DW Sports was nowhere near the level the Fitness First was. Right. So, and you know, and, and in the short space of time, we've started bringing that up. Yeah. Obviously, the, the, you know, you speak to anyone in DW Sports, they'll tell you they've really benefited in the last 12 months from from these courses, from these you know training training exercises that we've done. Yeah. Um, and and as, you, as you can you can really start seeing it now knit together. Yeah. So we're taking basically the best of both, and we're trying to bring it all together. All together. Yeah. 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 So if you, if you had to give your prediction what, what the future of the fitness club will look like, you know, how, what, what would you say? You know, is it going to look similar to, to this in 10 years' time? What do you think? Well, I mean, I think, I think everyone's aware of the fact that digital is right. going to be a big part of, of the industry. Um, you know, when the digital, when it's right, because I still believe in a lot of aspects that the content's not good enough, right. certainly for, to keep you going back, going back, going back. But when, they, when, that's, when, when, you know, when we get there... Um, I definitely think that'll be a big part of the industry. Right. Uh, and then how we how we incorporate that into our clubs um, is obviously is, is what we're starting to look at now. Now, yeah. obviously, if, if you like, if you're a member, how if, if you can't make it to the gym, how you can do it at home, um, and, and, and if you like, what that experience looks like. Yeah. That's obviously that's what's key. Yeah. We've all done like obviously you know like a spin class or a digital class, and you know like really you've, it's great the first time, but would you really come back and do it again and again and again? Yeah. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to make sure that content's right. But also create an environment that makes you want to come to the health club. Yeah. You know, don't want to do it at home on your own. You want to come and be part of a group. And, you know, you want to come where the atmosphere is, you know, obviously with fantastic atmosphere and meet friends, meet, meet, meet you know, yeah. make, make, make relationships. The social or communities. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's that community, actually, it's a big word, you know, because that was, you know, through the budget here, if you like, I would say that that's what a lot of clubs lost. Right, and obviously yeah. we had some great communities in our clubs and one thing I would say that we've, we're working on now is trying to bring that community spirit back right. you know because it's something that we lost yeah I think that's an important part particularly as Absolutely. most people don't fitness is not with the exception you know there are a few that just love working out but most people it's it's not nice it doesn't feel good you don't want to keep doing it but yeah, it's yeah, good for yeah. you and it's, yeah, you know, yeah, it's how, yeah. do you, how do you get people to do something they don't like and, yeah. and it's got to be more than just you know, and that's using something now that we're working with. We're not so much grade our members, but we know where, if you like which area they sit in. You'll get some guys who will join, who you know obviously know exactly what they're yeah. doing. Confident, leave me alone. Headphones on, yeah. leave me alone. Whereas you'll get the others who, who obviously who need coaching. You know, obviously right. need, need 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 steering. So, yeah. and that's what we're getting better at. You know, as I say, that's why we've got now people on the floor who, who can give them that advice. You know, if you need any help, just call me. I'm over here. You know, 
yeah. just let me know if you need me to uh, to assist in any way. Yeah. So we're, we're going back to that, and that's that's definitely working for us. Good. So Scott, a couple of quick quick fire questions before we end. Then um, don't embarrass me. So what was your last workout? <laughs> uh, PT session this morning. PT session. What, what, what did you do in it? Uh, functional, some, some functions of finish with a bit of boxing. A bit, bit of boxing, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what you sound like you're an extremely busy guy. Well, you are an extremely busy guy. How, how do you unwind? I ski. You ski at weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My favourite pastime is skiing. Yeah. So only in the three months when it's hectic, I yeah. ski, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. January, that's, February, March. And that's where you're off to this evening, by the way. I certainly am. <laughs> so what, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, listen. Um, right. You're not good at take listening it, take, sometimes. Take, take, <laughs> take everything in. No, I am actually. I'm, I think I'm good, but you know, you could always, uh, always, always improve on that one. Um, oh, you've caught me now. <laughs> you know, yeah. And listen, obviously, take advice. Yeah. Listen to advice. I mean, you know, obviously, you don't know until it's bad advice that it was. You know, that it was bad advice. But you know, obviously, take on board. Listen to what people say. Yeah. And you won't go far wrong. Yeah. Listen, listen. Keep, keep them open. Keep that shut. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Good advice. What, what would you say is your biggest career failure or disappointment and how did you overcome it? Um, my biggest failure... Uh, I mean, we've had a few times where we've had to make decisions whether we close a business down, right. um, whether, whether and, and I've said, you know, like, with, with, with all the work that you've done, you've got to make a cutthroat decision whether, as I say, you see it's got legs. Yeah. And I've been lucky in the fact that, you know, obviously those decisions that we've made certainly to keep a couple of things that we've had going at the time, keep them going, they've, they've turned the corner. Um, and I suppose I would say that that's probably right. my, my biggest success. Yeah. Um, we haven't had anything yet that we've had to, to close. And, right. um, albeit, you know, like obviously you never say never, and sometimes it's for the better. Right. But yeah. as I say, uh, it hasn't happened to me yet. So, yeah. so, so such was. That's, that's, that's good. Um, where, where do you go to get new ideas and inspiration for your business? Well, a lot of the fitness stuff comes from America. Right. Um, so... You know, obviously, I do see a lot out there. But also, I mean, obviously, there's some great stuff. Obviously, you guys are very, very innovative. Um, obviously, we listen to your steer. Um, but, but, I mean, obviously, I would say over the years, I have definitely picked up more ideas or more, more you know, more, more things that I would like to introduce into the health clubs. Definitely from America, yeah. yeah. I go there two weeks of the year, every year right. in the summer. I go to Los Angeles. So I have uh, my holiday there, and I can tie that. Luckily enough, I can tie that in with a bit of business, yeah. a bit of pleasure. <laughs> Um, so that works, yeah. and as I say, as many times I'm like I'm in New York quite a bit. You know, I'll, I'll always try and see what's happening there. And, yeah. and usually, one one or two of those towns usually have uh, yeah. the, a, a new a new a new form of or a new wacky way of working. Yeah. And hopefully, try and you know bring that into what, what our members understand and what our members would would, would work with. You know. Yeah. So uh, that's the challenge. Yeah. Um, what, what's your what's a typical morning routine look like for Scott? Oh, okay. Uh, t- <laughs> twice a week I go I work out in the morning and then coffee on the way to work yeah. and drive to work and then for about half eight. Yeah. Um, and then I'm usually in work till seven seven thirty. Yeah. Or, uh, but yeah, no, I have uh, I'll have a nutri bullet in the morning. Right. Okay. Nutri bullet followed by a coffee followed yeah. by boiled eggs in work, <laughs> and that's that's me. And yeah. then after that it goes all downhill. <laughs> Lunchtime onwards it's downhill. <laughs> Okay, and then final question, Scott, then. So, Escape Your Limits is about overcoming what you've been told to believe is impossible and then making it possible. So, what would be a, some kind of memorable example of where you've escaped your own personal limits? Oh, uh, one and the only one. I, I, run the, I run the London Marathon okay. a few years ago, and basically I was training for it, it was in April, and I was in a ski resort running miles and miles on a treadmill. Right. Uh, and, and pretty much, I mean, all my friends were back here running 16, 18, 20 miles the weeks before it led up to it, and I was doing 10 miles if I was lucky on a treadmill, and basically uh, never again. I mean, it was like the most punishing thing. <laughs> that I, uh, I just didn't enjoy it at all, but I got through it. I got through it. I yeah. felt like I was running backwards at times, yeah. but, uh, but that was definitely my, uh, my biggest achievement physically, right. uh, I would say, than the marathon, yeah. So what was your time? I went oh, don't ask. <laughs> I thought I was 40. Well, so I've never done it, so it's a lot better than what I've done. Oh, so. I wouldn't advise it. No. But, yeah, <laughs> but everyone says you should do it once, once and only once for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, Scott, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate your time. Yeah, Good luck you with too. everything, yeah. and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, then please go over to iTunes and subscribe to the Escape Your Limits podcast. 
leave a review, leave a comment. It really would help us a lot to continue to keep these going.